Hi, my name is Steven. It is I, Kevin. And I am David, the eldest champion. And we are the Brothers Born. We invite you to bear witness as this most unlikely of throwdowns is about to commence. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. After losing two consecutive throwdowns, I, David, <laughs> am only good enough to judge this one. <laughs> My record is so pathetic, I cannot participate any longer until next round. I thought you were the ultimate champion, dude. That was a that was another time, another life. Another time. <laughs> if we're going purely based off of the throwdowns from this new show we're doing, Kevin's winning, you and I are tied. So I think I'm below you because I've had more than you. I, this one will determine. Oh yeah, I suppose, suppose. Yeah. This one will determine. If you lose, you'll be tied with me. Well, I ain't going to lose, bro. I ain't going to lose. Well, okay. Then with that, let's have Steven introduce his character, or at least tell us about his character. All right. Let's see if we could guess who it is. Well, so, so so let me get straight for So our theme was psychic or oh, yeah. or yes. uh, henchman, right? Yes, okay. correct. All right, yes. cool. So I went for the henchman route instead of sidekick. Um, and my character's first appearance was in 1959 in a book old so then a few years later he made his appearance in film in 1964 he's most recently and i did not know this until i looked it up and it's perfect like segue from last episode his most recent appearance was in a mid credit scene of the 1999 inspector gadget film <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea he appeared in there, but he did. He's also appeared in car a cartoon, several video games, and in Vix 44 commercials back in like the 60s. Okay, I have no idea what's going on then. Um, he was portrayed by a Japanese actor named Harold Sakata. Okay, still not, still not going to do a little more than that, dude. <laughs> so he is Korean. He is a henchman. Um, I'll give you a little hint here. This oh, I know. Is it odd job? It is odd job. <laughs> odd job, huh? From, Jay, from James Bond. I don't know yeah. why I thought you, it you know, it's, you know, it's funny. But I was thinking the other day how a theme that we should do sometime are uh, characters who use an article of clothing as a weapon. So, um... <laughs> so odd job. Odd job. Yes. Um, so a couple of fun facts. Not, not about the throwdown. Just a couple of things I want to talk about that I think are interesting. Yeah, he's in these Vix 44 commercials, bro. So, like, he like, is sneezing, and every time he sneezes, he karate chops something and breaks it. <laughs> and then, like, or he's coughing. I think he's coughing, sorry. He's coughing and breaks something. And this lady rushes over to him and gives him a spoonful of this cough medicine, and he smiles, and he's fine. He doesn't break things <laughs> anymore. I looked him, up, looked him up on YouTube. It's pretty funny stuff. Um, but yeah, he, was, he, he made a cameo in uh, Inspector Gadget, which I thought was interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I was seeing Inspector Gadget. Uh, he just in a mid credit scene. It's like some villain convention or something weird. Like I never saw the movie. But... Uh -huh. So really quick, obviously his main thing is his hat, and I'm going to talk about that later. But I just want to play a quick little game. His hat was on auction in 2006. How much? I want to get your guys' guesses. How much someone paid for that thing? Five hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> Two million. Wow. Man, so poor odd job. It was only twenty six thousand dollars. What? Yeah, I know. I thought it was gonna be like. I mean, that's still a lot of money for me, for sure. But like, I thought it was gonna be closer to like what you guys said. But no, oh. man, twenty six thousand dollars at an auction, two thousand six. I don't know who whoever got it then. There's no more data after that, so I don't know. It's if a good maybe. deal. <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> someone, someone somewhere has an odd job hat. Yeah, he's practicing his moves with it right now. There's tons of replicas out there. I kind of right. want to get one. All right, all right, you nerd. Okay, so we got right. Odd Job, who I strangely thought of when I that was the first person I thought of when I thought of this uh, stipulation about. Oh, really? And yeah. It, everyone knows <laughs> best James Bond sidekick is Nick Nack, but anyway, Nick Nack is cool too. I digress. Okay, so I I uh, I struggled with this one because I really wanted to do um, Odd Job. 
No, I didn't. I, odd job wasn't even. I didn't even think about odd job actually. Okay. I was conflicted between a henchman and then more of a psychic hero character. I decided to go with psych, more psychic hero type character. Um, oh, so we'll I, have a good versus evil. Yeah, thing. not. Okay. I will. I will say. Oh, um, sidekick! I thought you said psychic. No, character. it's not sidekick. I'm like, huh. I will say with mine. One of the reasons I struggled to not maybe not doing this this character is because they are kind of, kind of a main character too. So we'll see. A lot of, a lot of these guys are though. It's no, good. I mean like, like I don't know if they're necessarily they kind of blur the line between sidekick and non sidekick. Anyway, that's near here there. So, um, this character has is has been portrayed by two actors. Uh, the first one being. Uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this Hold name. Hold on a second. My nose, I have to blow it, and I want to hear everything. So let me, I'll oh right my back. goodness. Let's start over that part in just a second. Well, after you said I have to blow it? <laughs> <laughs> let me know when you're done blowing your nose. I wonder if he's going to keep this part in the recording or not. No, he's not. I am so sorry, guys. Okay, start over with your character introduction. All right, so my character, um, yeah, so so my character has been played portrayed by two actors. Um, the one of them being I'm gonna butcher his name, uh, Tim Timura Morrison. Oh, okay, yeah, he played Uh, a and the uh, go ahead, Steven. Maybe you already guessed it. He's Boba Fett, isn't he? He played Boba Fett. He did, uh-huh. yeah. Okay. And um that's not the character that I'm doing, but yeah. And okay. then um he also uh was played by uh D. Bradley Baker. D. Bradley Baker. He's a, he's, he's a voice he's a voice actor. Is it Django Fett? In may re, no, not exactly. How can you say not exactly? Either it is or it's not. No, because he, he's cloned. He's one he, of the clones. Oh, wait a yeah, second. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you figured that out. He's one of the clones. Is he one of the Bad um, Batch guys? He's not one of the Bad Batch kick. guys. He's not one of the Bad Batch guys. So um, so being one of the clones, he was literally born to be a soldier. Uh, his clone designation is CT-7567. Um, Jar Jar um, Binks. Jar Jar is not a clone. <laughs> he would have been a cool so, one to use, though, wouldn't he? <laughs> however, this character is... Can you imagine use. Jar Jar versus Jar uh, Jar? That would have been cool. We're changing gears to... To Jar Jar, let's get no. Going. We're we're not doing that. So so he's calling CT seven five six seven. You guys have no idea who that is. Um, no. so he has a, he has a name. Uh, he does have a name. Uh, most of the clones do actually have names, so they kind of gave them themselves their own names. All right. So he was uh, he was put in charge of the five hundred first. Um, under who, which was ultimately commanded by one Anakin Skywalker. Okay, is uh, he in one of the movies? Yeah, he's in the movies. Um, he's also in the car. He has a bigger role in the cartoon Clone okay. Wars and okay. Rebels as well. He's also in that. Um, he was given the rank of captain, but eventually was made a commander, which is the highest rank that's available to a clone trooper. Um, and you guys still have robot. his name. Is he a robot? No, he's not. No, he is a clone. I just said that. It's Captain Rex. I, mean, I don't know what clones are. Captain Rex? Oh, <laughs> Captain I, Rex. I sort of I never heard him. of Captain Rex before. I, I figured you wouldn't. So Captain Rex is the was the clone commander that was under Anakin Skywalker. He's okay. the one that was in charge of his his clone legion. Okay, gotcha. So all right, he is in the movie yeah. though. We do I mean, yeah, he is in the movie. Um he doesn't have a huge part in the movie though. I don't I know, like Obi Wan's clone commander Cody, you, you is more prevalent in the mo- in the movies, I think, than Rex is. But he's he plays a bigger part in the Clone Wars cartoon as well as Rebels, and he was in a couple episodes of Bad Batch as well. But he's not. I one, almost not chose part. a Star Wars character, and I'm really glad I did not now because that would have been like way less interesting. But Odd Job versus Captain Rex is interesting. Odd Job versus Captain Dez. This is gonna be <laughs> it'll be a little bit different for sure. Oh, uh, okay. I don't, I, know much, I don't even know who this Captain Rex guy is, so I'm totally impartial here. Actually, I do know Odd Job though. Um, this is this is good because I was worried you're going to pick like someone obviously terribly strong, and uh, I think this is a little more fair because Odd Job, well, he's actually he's very strong. strong, man. He's pretty strong. He's so, very strong. And you you chosen two captains in a row. I remember we talked about doing a show just on captains before. 
<laughs> Captain America, Captain Hook. Lots of captains. Yeah, we should. Captain well, Planet, Captain Rex, not, Captain Jack, Jackson Briggs. I thought his name no, was Captain. No, no, Captain Jax isn't a captain. He's a major. Well, I think I guess, so. so I guess he would have been a captain at some point, I suppose. Yeah, he had to have been if he was a major. All right. Well, this should be an interesting throwdown, especially since I don't know much about Captain Rex. And I don't know much about, I know Odd Job in the movie, but I don't know what much else he would be doing other than what I saw in the movie. So this will be good. So we'll let our audience kind of think it over as we take a quick break. We'll see you on the other side. A wise man once said, cash rules everything around me. It's all about the money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Now the Brothers Born are definitely not part of the Wu-Tang Clan. But the sentiment, well, it's still true. When it comes down to it, making the content that we do can have some costs when it comes to equipment and certain fees. This is where you come in as a listener. No obligation here, but if you do like what we have and you would like to contribute a little bit of funds our way so we can improve our content, um, there's three different tiers of payment which you can use. The first one is a simple, cheap tier of 99 cents. Not too bad. Uh, next tier would be 4.99, or if you're straight balling, 9.99 for the third tier. Now there's no obligation here. We're gonna do the content either way, but we definitely would appreciate a little uh, help. Thank you in advance, and we look forward to providing more content for you. And we're back. So what I like to do first in our traditional thing is we'll go abilities and skills one round of that and then we'll kind of put them up against each other or maybe we want to do more if you have anything else to add about the background you can do that yeah and then hit us with the abilities because the backgrounds got a little i didn't hear a lot about either of them other than what movies and tv shows they're in so we'll keep going with steven go ahead all right odd job first of all no one knows his real name he's just odd job mr job First name odd. Um, he does, it is revealed he has a cleft palate, which renders him, um, he has difficulty speaking except to his boss, Auric Goldfinger. No one else can. Um, so as far as quotes are concerned, I got four for you. All right. You I thought ready? we were doing quotes at the end. Okay, fine. All right. So I don't odd- care when you do quotes, but if you want, we could do them at the end as a last final decision well see what with odd job there's not a whole lot oh, okay i'll do it at the end but um he you doesn't guys say, give inspector gadget quotes so <laughs> he doesn't say a whole lot um his personality he's very savage uh he's savage. also very loyal he's very loyal to his boss or at goldfinger but i say he's savage because he assisted goldfinger in murdering jill masterson by painting her body gold um and that's pretty savage. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just know. want to interrupt you. Let me interrupt you for a second. Does anybody else think it's weird that this woman just let people paint her gold? You know what I mean? Like, like that's not something you can do instantly. It takes time. Like, how did that work? Now she's like, what are you guys Wasn't doing? She okay, unconscious just, for it, yeah, just go ahead. Just just keep painting me gold. That's fine. You know, they, go ahead. They, do your thing. They probably knocked her out or something. I don't know. Yeah, she had to be unconscious. Um, or maybe she very- thought she'd be a high roller after she had gold paint all over her. In the in the book, he's kind of tall. Um, he's a sorry. In the book, he's described as a squat man with arms like thighs, black teeth, and a sickly zoo smell. Um, so in the he film, smell like animals. I guess so. Uh, good thing. Good thing Rex has a filter on his mask. But in the movie, we know he's he is squat, but he also is very thick. Um, arms like thighs is accurate, I'd say. Uh, he acts as Goldfinger's guard, chauffeur, and manservant, but not his uh, golf, not his golf caddy. He makes a point to say that. Um, abilities, okay, obviously very strong. My man can freaking crush a golf ball with his hands, his bare hands, crush, crush that golf ball. And he, when he does it, he stares at James Bond and just grunts at him or looks at him. It's pretty funny. I, I don't know if that's really a. The fact that oh. he stares matters, but okay. intimidating. Trying to crush a golf ball, dude. You can't t- that'd be tough to do. You can't. You can't intimidate Rex. But okay, go ahead. So his, the 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 skin on his striking surfaces surfaces like his hands or his feet is um, very calloused to add power 
to his yes. uh, stri- his striking power adds uh, oh. adds to that. The callus does. Are doesn't we hurt like it. Scientifically, are we it, talking wood? What are we? Scientifically, does... that makes no sense. Well, not a Star Wars <laughs> science makes sense. So um, <laughs> he uh, he's so tough. Like when he hits things, it doesn't hurt him. He just like he can just keep going. He's skilled in Taekwondo, Hapkido, oh. and he's a black belt in karate. And he has an art like a ring that fires arrows. Ooh. Wait, what? <laughs> an arrow ring? An arrow ring. Um he's I'm so st- by this ring. How how big are these arrows? They can't be very big. <laughs> he's so strong. He's a big he has big hands, dude. He yeah. barely notices getting struck by a gold bar in the chest and a wooden club across the face. Oh jeez. He is willing to die when a nuclear blast is imminent, and he's fiercely loyal to Goldfinger. Um, and of course, his most iconic weapon is his bowler hat, which can cut through stone and steel. It is sharp and powerful. And one of Wait, my did you say f- steel too? Yeah, dude. One of my favorite things is it's not. I mean, he has all these great powers, yes, and abilities. He also uh he's intimidating. He smiles whenever he's like with Bond. His and then only... he has black teeth too. When he's... <laughs> his only demonstration of fear is when Bond has his boulder cap. So he's never afraid ever until Bond has the hat. <laughs> then he's like, he starts, <laughs> oh, he starts, even... he so, uh... like you just I feel like like your whole case just went away right now. <laughs> <laughs> As it, but no, I'm saying he's fearless. He's loyal, okay. he is fearless. And uh, very powerful, very strong. Probably he well, knows what his hat can do. So if he sees someone who's good at throwing discus or something with his hat, he's probably or frisbee, he's probably nervous. Well, lo- loyalty, of course, you know that Rex has got that down. Um, so wait, wait Stephen, are you done? That's all I got right now. Yeah. So okay. Rex, um, interesting thing about him is not only did he participate in the Battle of Geonosis, which is the first major battle of the Clone Wars, but he also. That sounds kind of nerdy. You always call us nerds. That sounds kind of nerdy. Battle but, he also part- but he also participated in the Battle of Endor, which was the last major battle against the Empire, which means this, indiv- this Rex has been fighting in some capacity for a period of about 26 years. And that's and that's with accelerated aging. So that means like even as an old man, he's like kicking it, shooting down, killing some stormtroopers. Like he's pretty dope. But is killing stormtroopers really an accomplishment? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I mean, if you're like 80 years old, it is. That's um, true, I guess. Uh, he's oh, like, oh, Obi-Wan Kenobi took care of him, but that's true. Well, he had the force, though, too. Oh, yeah, true. Rex does not have the force, but he doesn't need it. Uh, he's one of the very few clones who was able to resist Order 66 um, and not uh, kill his Jedi uh, partner at the time. Um, it was a struggle for him, though. Uh, but he he was able to resist it. So he has he has drive, and he's very loyal to his friends. Even though you know he's trained his whole life to follow orders to the T without. So hang on. Any... Here's my stupidness again. But it, these clones, they're assigned to Jedi, and at one point they have to kill the Jedi, even though they're partners with them. Yes. So Order sixty six order goes out to all the clones that um that basically tells them that they have to kill the kill Jedi. So the Order 66 is implanted, and it's like these microchips are implanted in their brains. They How do these to... clones even kill a Jedi, though? With, there's like a lot of them. Anyways, um, they have to do it. Like they're, they, they, they can't, they can't not do it. Uh, but Rex was one of the few clones that was able to resist doing, uh, uh killing. Uh, it was actually Ahsoka at the time. Um, he's been trained as an advanced recon commander, which is the most highly trained uh clone um type of clone trooper. Uh, he's uh, Luke Skywalker, or not Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker is the most trusted soldier. Uh, he's an expert in various, we're using various blasters. Uh, he's an expert in hand to hand combat. Um, his preferred weapon is uh, two DC 17 pistol uh, blaster pistols, which is like a heavy blast pistol known as being reliable. Dang it. I like uh, the DC 18 pistols. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, he has his uh, clone armor, mm-hmm. which is. A little bit better than stormtrooper armor. Um, but it's as good as odd jobs. Um, coat, I don't know. Odd job suit. So he has a he has a phase one helmet, which uh, has a life support system embedded into it, so he doesn't have to worry about odd job smell. Uh, he also has a jetpack. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> he also has a jetpack, but he's um he's incredibly experienced. He's very tactical in the way he thinks. Uh, he's mm-hmm. able to command others. 
Uh, he's he able to earn others respect. Um, even though he's been trained his whole life to, you know, follow orders to the T like and not strafe them. He does have kind of the seems to have this ability where he is able to resist orders that don't make sense to him or would, um, potentially harm like his fellow troopers. Uh, there was an example, it wasn't Skywalker, but he was working under another Jedi who had turned to the dark side and he was, um, sending clones out to their death basically. And he, he resists. He was like, you know what? I'm not following his orders anymore. I don't want my troopers to die. So he's super loyal to his people. People are super loyal to him, but he's not comp- loyal to his boss. He is loyal. Well, to Skywalker nope. is Anakin Skywalker. He is obviously not because he resists Order sixty six. No, first of all, that's how. That's why that's, it proves my point. He was so loyal to his Jedi friends that he resisted the order that was told that he was given to kill them by when, Anakin, who he's supposedly loyal to. Anakin's not the one. That, Emperor Palpatine gives a um order, not Anakin, but he wasn't with Anakin at that time. He was actually with Ahsoka at the time. And, and she was not even. You call us nerds, but no one knows as much about Star Wars as you. So that's just proof <laughs> that we all have something we're nerdy in. Because I had never heard of any of the stuff that you're talking about. But go ahead. I'm, my I'm writing is, it down. I'm writing it down. My, though, I, I my point is, someone. my point is, is he has experience. He's loyal. He's strong. He can fight hand to hand combat. He can use his blasters. He has a jetpack. Um, he oh, can oh, from- jetpack too. Yeah, man. And you know, because he has a life support system embedded in his helmet, he can even like live in space for a period of time. Oh man! You know? So, just saying, I think, I think he, I think he got this one. I think he's got this one. Oh. Okay, hold on. I just got to write down one more thing. Twenty six <laughs> years of combat experience. Odd job doesn't have twenty six years of combat experience. You don't know that. How you, you don't know, know that. Odd job has though. I don't. I don't know how much he has, but you don't know how much how little he has. It could be he has a <laughs> lot of combat experience. He's very trained in hapkido and, and taekwondo, painting. and he's a uh, painting with with precious metals. He's, yeah, he's very. He's an artist, that. dude. He is. He, he's an artist, and he's also a black belt in karate. So, uh, yes, well, but yeah. but Captain Rex received like all the special forces training and stuff. He's he's got more training than most clones. Oh. Like he's got the most training you could possibly get as a clone. Okay, I do have a, a quick question here before yes. we keep this thing rolling. In the Jedi or in the Star Wars universe, I don't remember. I'm not as familiar with it as you two gentlemen are, obviously, but I don't remember martial arts really being a thing ever. Is it? Hmm. Is anyone in the Star-, Star Wars world to have martial arts? Like, yeah, there's there's martial arts in Star Wars world. Uh, it didn't specify which ones he knows. Not that matters because they're all made up. But um, it there there are some. Um, you could almost say the the Jedi. It's like a Tai Chi sort of thing going on. It's yeah, like I mean, there's that. And there's uh, like in Han Solo the movie. What's her name? Kira or whatever talks about practicing some martial art. I don't remember what the name of it was. Or that dude in Rogue One with the I'm one of the force, the forces with me, and he has that stick. Like he... Oh, that's true. Yes, I forgot about him. Because he's blind, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yes. Okay. Rex I Rex, is, however, is not blind. All right. So I got a lot of stuff here to written down. I'm trying to be like Steven and write stuff down. Thank you. And I do have um they both have very strong like their personalities both have things in them that would lend itself well to being sidekicks or henchmen. They're both very loyal um, from what you guys are saying. And they both, um, they're both very strong. Rex, you talked a lot more about his leadership than I heard about Goldfingers or not Goldfingers, Ajab's leadership. So Ajab seems more like a, more like the typical assistant slash henchman based on your guys' description. Although it does, Rex is so loyal that he's able to resist that order mm-hmm. six, six, whatever it is, and he doesn't kill his friend. But then on the other hand, that makes him not loyal because exactly. he's not following the really, like he's following the person he works with closely. He's protecting them, but he's not really following the rules that he's supposed to, that his commander gives him. Well, that's kind of my point though. I mean, he's so loyal to his friend that he resists an order to kill his own friend. Like that's- but- Pretty good loyalty, considering like none of the most none of the other folks were able to, to do it. He's not loyal to the whoever puts out that Order sixty six, which is really his true leader. Yeah, Emperor Palpatine. Okay, yeah, okay. I don't know. Sorry, I know That's Palpatine. Fair. But um, so as far as personality goes, I feel like they both have loyalty and they'll both protect the people that are that they're assigned to be with. 
Um, well, I don't know if Ajab was assigned to be with Goldfinger, but he ended up with him. But I want to know their history, him. actually. Hmm? I'd love to know how Ajab and Goldfinger came to be. It, does, it doesn't tell you. <laughs> It'd be an interesting <laughs> story, I'm sure, though. Now, fa- I'm going to go with, uh, like, as far as weapons go, I feel like Rex has access to more powerful weapons as he far does. as, like, he firearms. Does. Um but how many you say he's trained in all these blasters, but does he always have them with him? Does he have does he just I mean, have all he, this training, but I never have to use it. I never use it. Meaning he really doesn't have the training or what kind of thing is this? Well, I mean, he's trained with all the different forms of blasters, but his preference is for the two um the pistols that I talked about. The okay. uh which I mean, and they're they're known as being one of the more powerful of uh, blaster pistols, and he's super accurate with them. Um I miss the names of those pistols. But I'd like you to share them again just to show the audience how dorky you truly are. First of all, I don't know this off of memory, all right? I looked it up. Yes, he does. Uh, but but <laughs> I do not. But they're DC-17 blaster pistols. Are there DC-16 blaster pistols? I don't know. I didn't look that up. Is it is it like is that a caliber? Like we have the Colt 45 no, at it's, the DC? No, it's just a model number. Okay, okay. so he used, and they're both identical blasters that he uses. Yeah, he's got two of them. So like one in each hand blasting stuff. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so that's his main, that's his main weapon of choice. He also, you talked about his strength, um, and you talked about his, his willpower. Um, he's very loyal. He's been in a lot of battles. He's got experience. I don't know exactly how much experience Ajab has, but weapons wise, Ajab has two things that I, other than he, they both seem like they're good at hand-to-hand combat. One favors the martial arts, I think over the other, um, weapons wise, Ajab has his watch that mysteriously fires arrows no, it's, a, it's a ring i'm oh, not ring. sure if That's it's a... like a ring like on his finger or if it's just like a ring th- I, I i don't so know i'm thinking the arrows are probably like this big maybe like like, like yeah so i'm saying like little tiny arrows <laughs> do they have poison on them by chance? it doesn't matter the little tiny arrows aren't going to penetrate the um the armor because they're just arrows now but, the hat i can i will i will agree the hat probably can if you can break well the i haven't steel. got to that yet oh, but i've, I've but, seen but pictures of but his little arrows aren't going to be able to go through through clone armor. I saw some pictures just in my quick Googling. Oh. The Googles, that sometimes Rex doesn't have a helmet on, though. So he'd be able to get him in the face. Maybe. When he's when he's in combat, he has his helmet on. Huh. Okay. So he only has, it, he only has it off when he's not in middle and when he's not in combat. Let, let so me, the main thing is the hat. Go ahead. Uh, and he also does have a pistol. In the movie Goldfinger, there's like, oh, yeah, he does. He's a, he shoots that guy with a silencer on it. So he's sneaky, oh, right. kind of stealthy, perhaps. Uh most so henchmen, a lot yeah, of henchmen are. He, he does and I, I like how both these are loyal. Where if you go in the world of henchmen, some are very loyal, but some all they try to do is usurp the uh, authority of their leader. Yeah. But these two are both very loyal. Like if Kevin would pick Star Screen or Destro or somebody, all they want to do is take over and be in charge. But these two, they don't want that. I don't think this hat. Yes. I'm wondering another question about it. I don't remember this. I'm not as much of a Bond connoisseur as dad is, for example, other than I like the newer ones until the last one. I don't like James Bond anymore because what happened to him in the last one, they shouldn't have killed him off. Spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it. But anyways, does the hat, I'm getting off track here, does the hat have some kind of um, the ability to return to you after you use it is what I'm wondering. Oh, it does not have that, um, Okay, unfortunately. Uh, I, so like, so like so what we're looking at so what we're saying is odd jobs weapon the hat which could potentially go through sword uh, i got this. armor i'm the judge yeah only one time i see i, I got I, I see where you're going say where i'm going it can't really come back to him all the time so you got to either no. take care of business on the first throw or hopefully disable the enemy enough to go back and get the hat again then run back to your corner so you can use it again because yes. it does seem like only really a distance weapon right like you can't yes. really yes. i've never I, seen it wait, go like this with the hat <laughs> on somebody's neck or something i, I, I want to know but, what kind of range does this hat have well because, i'm not worried about range because odd job's pretty strong and i feel like well, he's accurate, so he well, probably, I just feel, quite far. I, probably but i still feel like blaster range would be greater i don't know man it depends the blasters on... can shoot really far <laughs> I feel like from a dis- from the distance game, Rex has it in the bag because he's got blasters and Ajab's got a hat. Ajab also has a pistol and arrows. But, yeah, but his, okay. well, his arrows aren't going to go through the armor. His pistol, I mean, it's like Let, a little pistol. Right, so my thing is the hat, like Captain America's shield, it 
it doesn't really act like a boomerang, but he can throw it in such a way that it returns back to him. Like yeah. it bounces off the thing and um, returns back to him. I Once want... the hat jams into something, it's stuck there till Ajahn yes. gets it again. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, I would love to say it came back, and I want to say that, but the reality is it does not. But, but on talk... the other hand, he is very accurate with it, what I remember from the movie. Yes, and the yeah. hat was basically, it's a bowler cap. It was made by British Hat Makers Lock and Company. And it has a chakram in the brim, which is like a, like a, a some, blade, some... a circular blade like that. Um, okay. Now this and... blade that it has is the is the metal in it strong enough to go through um, armor that a clone might be wearing. Yes, I'm gonna. Uh, I mean, said, there's no. There's been it no. Cut through steel. It cut through steel and stone, and there's no data to like. This is the first time we've ever put odd job against a Star <laughs> yeah. Wars character ever, probably. So, um. It's, I, I I will agree that it likely will cut through clone yes. armor. I will. I'll agree to that. But okay. my, my argument is he only used it one time. Um, I imagine it has some limited range. Rex has two blasters. He can shoot. His range is going to be greater. And is he can and and he has multiple shots. He can just shoot and sh 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 keep blasting those blasters, shooting odd job in the face and the chest, no matter. And odd job well, is armor very spry anything. though. He can dodge. He is, through he's. I don't think he's going to be able to dodge two blasters. And let me say. He also can take it. I mean, my man got slugged in the face with so, like a club. He's also got yeah, a gold so bar I'm in the chest. But a, club, like, but a club is not a blaster. That, that's a bolt of plasma that's going to like melt through your skin. Gentlemen, you gentlemen. Can... <laughs> so I'm thinking that's what I'm going with. Like distance wise, I'm, I'm just trying to see all the, all the variables here. I guess the hat, I guess the weight of it probably gives it quite a d bigger distance than you would think it would have on top of a job strength. But yet, it isn't a blaster. So, it, <laughs> I'm not, not saying that the distance is nothing to sneeze at with the hat. I mean, it, it, it probably goes more than like across the living room. It probably can go far. I'm giving it that. But it's not like a firearm, though, is what I'm saying. No, it is not a so, firearm. But, but he, he does, does have, have a pistol. firearm. He does. I just want to but I'm thinking, keep forgetting. And again, it. this is my knowledge of Star Wars, whatever this DC-17 weapon is. It sounds like it might be a little bit stronger than a little hand pistol with a silencer on it. Maybe. But he'd be, he'd be sneaky, though. Now, the like, arrows, Kevin doesn't well, think they'd be useful, but I feel like he could somehow get those arrows in there to do a little bit of damage. Yeah, I bro. think so. What's where? He's got he's armored. Dude, the, he, just, the, okay, okay. The arrow, okay, the arrows aren't going to go through armor. And as no. far as the DC-17 blasters, if they can blast through droids, which are made of steel, I'm pretty sure they can blast through odd job. So yeah, I'm just saying I think the arrows might be able to he might be able he's so sneaky he probably he could get the arrow in. up underneath one of those now, helmets. And I'll be but, honest, I looked up Captain Rex on Google. First image it popped up, he wasn't wearing his helmet. So easy. Well that was my earlier point, but then on the other hand, Stephen <laughs> did Kevin did bring up that in battle he always wears the helmet. Oh, okay. So but if you catch him off guard, then that's a different story, right? Yeah, yeah. Um but anyways, so weapons wise, I think Captain Rex might have it, although I'm just saying don't don't just dismiss the arrows because that could be your downfall. <laughs> I'm not saying they'll do much, but don't just dismiss them. Now, hand-to-hand -hand combat, Ajab might have it a little bit here because Ajab's trained in all these martial arts. That's true, he is. Um, now, they're both very strong. He, Ajab doesn't have armor, so maybe his defense isn't quite as high, but he does have that strong rhino skin with calluses <laughs> all over it. However, I know <laughs> calluses are good to have, but... I think armor, they're not like, armor. They're not armor. I think armor like, might be and, a little better. And Rex has a jetpack, so like Aja will be like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw a kick," and Rex is like, "Jetpack, just up in the sky." So this is jetpack. Like you guys comes back down using, and punches him in the face. I tried using the same defense. Like I'm still a little bit fresh from my defeat that happened a couple days ago. <laughs> and you told me that the helicopter go go gadget copter was not quick enough to avoid Jax's blast. <laughs> yeah, but that's so not a jetpack. Jet that's a helicopter. Be quick this is, this is a jetpack. A jetpack is going to be quicker than a head Yeah, but helicopter. doesn't it have to like charge up or something or does no, it have to No, no, he just uses he it. Just man. always just, has it in his disposal. Just uses it. Um so he always wears it no matter what. Right? Is that what you're saying? I mean, yeah. when when yeah, he wears it. I mean, not every battle. He doesn't he doesn't wear every battle, but um so odd job. Odd job. Oh, go okay, ahead. go ahead. I'll let you get something. Ajab doesn't there. have a rocket a jet pack, is all I'm saying. He does not. Um, his Ajab, hat is kind of looks like Inspector Gadgets. So, but I don't, he doesn't have any gadgets in there. No, though. he does not. Sorry. Ajab was the inspiration. Uh, just a little homage back to last episode to Mortal Kombat's character Kung Lao, is based off of, was inspired by Ajab. 
Kung Lao's oh. a guy who also has a bladed hat. Um, so just a little fun Dude, fact. Kung, Kung, I wonder who would win from Kung Lao and Ajab. That'd be a good oh, match. Oh, Ajab for sure. Um, so so Ajab has a connection to both of our former warriors from the last. Yes, time. he does. He does have a connection to both of our okay. former warriors. Rex doesn't have a connection either. So Ajab <laughs> has it there. Um, um, there's there's a little thing I wanted to give me just a second here. Um, okay, yeah, so. In, there's an ongoing James Bond comic book called James Bond 007. There's a new iteration of Oddjob that's featured in there. He's a South Korean secret agent and successor mm-hmm. to the other Oddjob. Um, but it's not a, the same Oddjob, though. It's no, not the same Oddjob, though. His, his, name is, story, though. his name is John cute. Lee. Okay. Um. So here's the thing. We're talking because, about this. Because we're going F. Oddjob can have his little like follow-up Oddjob guy. Well, you have all the clones has, on your side. Rex has with all their the DC seventeen pistols. All well, right, Ken does it. have a point there. Like, odd job if he's not good enough to finish it, it's not like his son or junior odd job. Like that's yeah. like a second generation well, hands. Here, so hear, hear me out on this one. You got me there. Sure, I won't include John Lee odd job. I'll hear you so, out on it. I'm just telling no, you. No, no, no. That's fine. I'll, we can negate. Thoughts. We can negate that. Going back to the hat, and <laughs> let me talk a little bit about. Something that you and the the three of us used to do like 20 years ago, we would play James Bond Nightfire. Okay, you guys remember that? I'd fall asleep and my character would walk in circles and you just kill me for free kills. (laughs) No, you'd still beat us even when your character was doing that. Um, But go ahead. (laughs) In that game, when you're playing his odd job, the hat after you throw it comes back after 20 seconds you just get a new one yeah, so well, that's, that's a video game though so that's not like that, that's it's not an like... iteration of odd job bro it's in the wikipedia page so you get a hat it just regenerates itself and you get a new one okay. so steven does have 20 a seconds you got another here. one whoosh, throw it point. again um yeah but does, it, like you said it takes like 20 from, it takes like 20 seconds right in that time rex could you use his dc 17 blasters like Probably get a hundred okay. times. I got one other thing to that I thought of as you guys are bantering it together. I'm I got to come to a decision here pretty soon. Didn't realize how late it was, but let's go with. I know you said Captain Rex has this mountain of experience, which is awesome, and nothing like an old soldier that's had so much experience. And I feel like older soldiers just do whatever they want. Don't really are just a lot more sad. Like in, they're just more vicious. But then their strength is not as big, when, strong when they're older. I guess. So, Captain Rex, in hand-to-hand combat, I appreciate his experience, but as he gets older, does he still have the same physical abilities? Because I feel like Ajab does have some pretty good physical abilities. I, I would say, like, if you I know compare, he's a clone, so how yeah, he's, fast he's a do clone. these physical abilities go away for clones is what I mean. I, I will say, um, just by watching, like, Rex in Clone Wars versus Rex in Rebels, because in Rebels is when he's, old, he's older. Um, he doesn't doesn't seem to be any difference in his abilities. Like he still seems to be a good fighter. Though there is an amusing part. There is an amusing thing where he's he's definitely a little bit older, so he has a little bit of a hard time fitting into his a uh, clone armor initially because <laughs> he's got because he's gotten a little bit of a dad bod. So that's kind of funny. But like his so abilities, is he just as spry as he always has been when he has. Yeah, that, no, his abilities seem to happen to Boba Fett in the Boba Fett TV show. If I remember the same thing. Happened to Thor too, but yeah. Yeah, well, Thor's the god of thunder, so he's whatever. But so you're saying it didn't really. I'm, say, I'm saying. The yeah, I mean, I'm saying his. I'm saying his. I mean, he's probably old and achy afterwards, but his his uh, combat skills seem to be the same. The skills the same. So I'm trying to think of this scenario because right now in my head, I feel like when it's distance fighting or whatever weapons. I really hate to say this because the hat is one of my coolest weapons ever. I even used to <laughs> pretend like I was odd job. And throw hats that I wore when I was little, just for the fun of it. But I feel like weapons and arsenal wise, and, and like I think that Rex does have the the advantage there. But I feel like hand to hand combat that odd job might have the advantage. Yeah. Actually, I know I probably pr- think he probably would have the advantage there. So, and I feel like with this hat, how, he's pretty accurate with it, right? Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm thinking of the time he missed, <laughs> he missed James Bond, and James Bond saw it, and he got scared for a second. Yeah, he—he he, the only time I've seen him See, be accurate. And, and that's what I'm saying. 
I was like, he's going to throw the hat. Rex can use it. Or, 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 you know, Rex could just shoot his hat off with his little blasters or whatever. And he picks up the hat and Al Job's like, oh, no. no okay, I got hold that thought. That's a, I was thinking along that line too. But what were you going to say, Kevin what, or Steven? What's your thought there? Uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, it just makes the case stronger for Kevin. So <laughs> I'll just keep. <laughs> the only time I've seen the hat accurate is when he hits the stone statue. It never actually hits James Bond ever. But in the video game, I'd be more. <laughs> yes, in the video game, it's a thoughts. fierce it's weapon. Accurate there. Yeah, he's like the number one coveted player in Goldeneye, and um. Yeah, I'll entertain that a little bit, and I don't know about the regenerating hat. The twenty seconds. You have a little bit of point there because I'm still a little bit mad about the him saying the copter would be too slow to stop Jax's hands. <laughs> so, but anyways, you have to be unbiased though. Wowzers! Yes. No, I know I'm I'm being unbiased. I'm just messing. Around. So. Um, so the the hat, as effective as it can be, it's not always effective. Where I feel like a blaster, two blasters. Unless, like I, I'm I'm assuming. What, Captain what, what, what kind of blasters, aim. Kevin? What kind of blasters <laughs> are they? DC seventeen. Oh yeah. So I, think, I feel like you that. <laughs> I feel like these blasters, though. Like I'm assuming Captain Rex has a little bit better luck with a blaster than a stormtrooper. Yeah, yes. I mean his armor is a different color, so obviously he's more skilled. <laughs> his armor is a different color. <laughs> yes, no, he's very skilled with his blasters. He can take fools out like nothing, like ain't no one tomorrow. Okay. All right. In, what in if that's general... the secret in Star Wars? If you just painted your armor a different color, suddenly you're not a stormtrooper anymore. I, you're I, like a I faster think, gunman. I think in general the clone troopers were probably better trained and more accurate than the stormtroopers were. Even though the clone troopers were just a bunch of clones. Yeah, All but right, they well, were but they were, but they were bred to fight. Like that was a side their whole note. Purpose. This is a side note, but it would help me a little bit in my decision. Clone troopers compared to the those stupid side those stupid droids that fight in um Phantom Menace. Who who would do better in that battle? Uh, honestly, well, see, so the droids, it's not that they have great skill, it's just that there's so many of them. They have numbers. And where does the Empire get money for all these droids too? Well, the Units. Empire doesn't have the droids. It's that's the uh, um Republic. That's See, not the Empire. That's, that's before again, the Empire. The thing that you know about Star Wars that I don't. Yes, I realize. So <laughs> the so, <laughs> they so cost the Republic, a lot of money. the clones fight fought for the Republic, um, and they some Dark Lord commissioned uh, can't, uh this these people these cloners to create them. Where they get the money, I have no idea. It doesn't tell me where they get the money, but there's like millions of clones. Yes, I know that from the. There's millions of clones in. There's millions of those droids. There's millions of everything in Star Wars. So, anyways, we have to kind of bring this around to the end. But in this scenario, do you guys want to come up with a a real quick, like, final argument? Let's say, there, let's say there's. Let's just give me, give me like a two minute how this battle might play out, and I'm gonna start with. Uh, yeah, we'll just start with um, Aja mysteriously coming up to Captain Rex and being the one who's like initiates the battle go ahead so i don't know exactly how the battle turned out or who's going to win but somewhere in the course of this battle this is something that's going to happen whether i whether our job wins or captain rex wins it doesn't matter this scene must happen at one point in time captain rex's helmet is in our job's hands <clears throat> captain rex's helmet is in our job's hands and our job crushes it like a golf ball that, that, is going to be, the golf ball that is going to be something okay. that happens regardless I, of who wins. I'll, I'll agree that that scene would have to be in this battle. I, I think, <laughs> but I think on top of that, I think we'll add a little bit of amusement to that scene is as he, when he has Captain Rex's helmet and he's crushing it, Captain Rex has odd jobs hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he would do with it. It just would be funny to have like Rex the holding contract. Try to throw it at odd job. <laughs> so, okay. Um, there'd obviously, I mean, he would throw a hat or three or 300, depending on how long the battle went, <laughs> <laughs> but he would, he would throw them. Uh, he'd probably fire some arrows. I'm thinking if the helmet's off and he would try and fire the arrows at Captain Rex's face and it the might pistol, give a little scratch or pinch yeah. him a little bit. Go ahead. And the pistol would be used, but I think ultimately come down to some hand to hand. Like he's like fighting, chopping Captain Rex, like what the, what the, with his calloused hands okay. and feet. So and, he uh, sneaks up on Captain Rex, crushes the helmet. Starts chopping them up. Kevin, what happens next? See, <clears throat> so they're they're close at this point. So it kind of negates okay. the, the blasters and throwing the hat. You could still use the hat. I guess it doesn't negate the blasters. You could still use them in close range, but all but... right. So 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 in this battle so far, what we're saying is uh job snuck up on Captain Rex, took all his helmet and crushed it. 
Um, at that point, Captain Rex turns around, is like, "What?" And he grabs that. He grabs Oddjob's hat and he throws it. Not at Oddjob. Oddjob. He just throws it aside. He doesn't then realize there's a chakram inside of it. He just throws it aside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then, so then he takes. Wait, then he uses. Then he uses his jetpack. And there's another one. <laughs> then he uses his jetpack to blast off a few feet away, and then pulls out his blasters and just starts blasting Oddjob. Okay. Yeah. Oddjob would probably take. He'd probably dodge quite a few of those. But maybe he's not dodging blasters. Right. He's not dodging blasters. But maybe he get hit or once or twice. And... His calloused hands would defend the blast. <laughs> yeah, dude, well, it's, that skin is, it's, that skin is so tough. Like he chops those that that uh, sneeze medicine or whatever. Every time he sneezes. <laughs> I, just, I just don't see that happening. I don't know. Um, okay, so me... what? Real quick, what would Ajab have done to try to get stop Rex from from flying away like that? Would you like grab onto him and? Could the jetpack carry both of them up into yes, the air? Yes, the jetpack no? could definitely carry the belt. He would probably try to grab onto him, yeah, I'd say. And he'd try to pry the jetpack off while they're in the air. Because he has no fear, remember. He has no fear of dying. So, Either does Rex. True. So he would try and pry that backpack off, knowing full well that both of them might plummet to their death. But just as long right. as the mission is accomplished. Well, okay, now let's just do this. So I got a battle kind of picture in my head now. I've got their abilities. I'm pretty familiar now. Let's come around to the last part, usually, which is the quotes. As this battle's <laughs> happening, I need you guys, if you have some quotes to give me, both of you, it might help All your right. case. I'll give you a couple of quotes. Let's see. Um, uh, okay, he has one that says, we may be dead men, but we can still stop these droids. So right there, it shows like he's not afraid of death either, man. He's willing Our to jobs, take it to the end. Not a droid. That that quote doesn't really apply to the battle, but I do think it's a pretty savage quote. Go no, ahead. No, no, I'm not. Words? I'm not saying that job's a droid, but I'm saying that the the maybe he is. The, the the point of the quote is still the same, regardless of who his enemy is. He's basically saying, "Hey, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. We, we might be dead, but we're still going to stop this enemy from from winning, whether it's droid or somebody else." Um, let's see what else. What's uh, or some good ones. Uh, can, well, why don't you give a quote, Steve? Yeah, so uh-huh. you obviously failed the quote part of this, but no, I'm not, I haven't. I'm just looking for more quotes. So I bet yeah. Stephen has them memorized. Go ahead, Steve. Um, so he has four lines of dialogue in the entire film. One, um, upon pretending to have found Goldfinger's missing golf ball, he exclaims, "Aha!" The second time, after killing Tilly Masterson, he instructs his men to just to get rid of her body. And the way he does this, he points at her and says, ah, <laughs> that's how his men know to just give her the body. Um, he I says, take it back. <laughs> then, uh, he, there's a situation where they're in a gas area. He's not fighting James Bond yet. He just instructs Bond to put a gas mask on. He says, ah, and uh, when he dies, he goes, ah, All right. <laughs> anyway, so more wet Rex quotes in my book, experience outranks everything. Oh man, dude is a great experience as a, a military leader. Uh, today we fight for all our brothers back home. So he's you know showing his loyalty there. He's fighting for everybody. He's all his brothers. You know, experience outranks everything. I'm telling you, man, Rex is dope. All right. Well, okay. Is there any last like I'm going to give you each surrender of public dogs? As somebody says to Rex, his response is, "We've got you outnumbered." Yeah, that's, that's not really that creative. That's, that's not really that good. It's, it's that's a little really better than. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now if anyone wants like a last statement, yes. Okay, I'm gonna give you thirty seconds. Go, okay. Steven, you're up. Odd job, in the midst of battle, smiles at his opponent. Savage. I don't that's have much. You, that's what you got. <laughs> no, I'm saying he is intimidating. He is powerful and strong, and he's got the most interesting weapon, probably, of weapons we've discussed so far. And he has more calluses than Slash on his yes. fingers. Yes, he does. Them. All right. Okay. Kevin, Remember, do you have a retort? He's right. smiling at you, <laughs> so, bro. Do, oh, oh, that was 30 seconds. Okay, Kevin, go. Okay, so Rex is a well-trained clone, and he does not fear Ajab. He does not get intimidated by his enemy. He's focused. And so the fact that he has blasters, I have a good range that could shoot through odd job like butter. He just obviously has the obvious win. Even in close combat, he can just pull his blasters out and just start shooting odd job in the face. Um, he just he's got more maneuverability because he's got his jetpack. It's just all around going to be a better fighter. He's got better equipment. Uh, odd job's guys martial arts. I'll give you that. That's but time. Rex, all right. There's your last one. All right. 
Okay, people. <laughs> I'm not biased at all because both of you smoked me in our last battles. So, <laughs> but I'm thinking like there are good points on either side. I don't want to make anyone feel like their their character is not good because they I I personally between the two characters, I just I always thought Odd Job was cool. But he this is isn't awesome. about what I thought all the time. Like, I don't know much about Rex, so I actually wouldn't be fair if it was just based on my thoughts of the character. Ajab does have the hat, which I feel like it's not a distance weapon, but I feel like it still is just as dangerous as the blasters. With In Ajab's hands, I'd say, I'd say I agree. But it doesn't have the distance, obviously. The little arrows, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to hear a little bit more about them, but I didn't. So I right didn't. now I'm still picturing <laughs> these tiny little baby arrows that just go ding and fall down. <laughs> And then Rex might say, oh, that's cute, and then blast them or something like that. So I, I got to take out the arrows. But the hat okay. is the coolest weapon, obviously, in this battle. Um, and he does have a gun, which would help, you know, if, you know, I think it could help a little bit. I don't know if it worked past armor, but it could help a little bit. However, weapons-wise, I'm going to have to give it to Captain Rex weapons-wise because blasters, and they're probably laser blasters. Ajab has thick skin, but it's a laser. Ajab doesn't have armor. Um, close up hand-to-hand -hand combat. If Ajab got the jump on him, I think Ajab could beat him down pretty easily if the blasters were somehow thrown down and the jetpack was disabled. Like just hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm sorry, I think Ajab could win because of all the martial arts. And then I think Captain Rex is a little bit older, so maybe his abilities are still as good as when he was younger. But I, I think he is a little bit older, so I think Ajab could win hand-to-hand. -hand. But we're taking all this into account and based on your narrative. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give it to Captain Rex. I'm sorry. I love my job, but clone CT seven five six seven rules. It's going to Captain Rex this time. It's going to Captain Rex and his DC seventeen blaster pistol. <laughs> Whatever I did, I told you I looked that up. I didn't know that had that memory. Whatever you have that you have a replica and you're hanging on your but, wall. I mean that would be cool, but no. <laughs> I do and not. a replica of the hat too, would be cooler. I think even quote wise though, Ajab does get Ajab has the quotes over it too. But I just keep thinking of this picture in my head of how scared Ajab was when his hat didn't work the first time, and he saw Bond with it, yeah. and it did take care of the statue. In the video games, the hat works perfectly. But I'm thinking of the hat. Obviously, if the hat gets him the first time, the battle's done. <laughs> but I'm gonna say, and and what I've learned from both sides, I think that it would go to Captain Rex. So. Uh. It's fine. I I accept Congrats. defeat. I kind of knew. <laughs> I kind of knew. I knew it was coming, but I had to. There's not a whole uh -huh. lot of information out there on on odd job either, so I was kind of limited in that regard. But um, it was a fun battle, though. I'm. I. It was. I and enjoyed. just like every other battle, I believe there are lots of um ways this could play out where odd job would definitely win. Um, yeah. like the hat, I think is like I don't know. Don't you think it's just as powerful as a blaster? The blade is just as powerful as a blaster. I don't, I don't know about that. It cuts through steel, dude. <laughs> so I'm changing my verdict. <laughs> so does a blaster. <laughs> so I know. I'm just, blaster. That's what I'm saying. It's just as powerful. I didn't, or maybe more. I don't know. But that's yeah, fine. it's gonna have to go to Captain Rex. That was a good battle. I uh, feel pretty. I'm bummed out, but it's okay. The judge, you know, they had, they made a decision. I have to accept it. Um, and now we're going back to the other model where we just pick our characters whatever random yeah so or, i like the stipulations and i want to do that again but i think to kind of just keep it fresh let's go back to where we just pick any old character so you and me dave we're gonna pick characters and kevin mm -hmm. you're judge next so um anxious to see what you select um I, I need to get a i should get a clone trooper um helmet for <laughs> just wear it <laughs> I'll get no, i'm kidding again. i'm kidding no, i'm not kidding. gonna do that <laughs> That would be that'll be that's even that's too high nerd level even for me. Kevin, it, Kevin just whips that out. He's been waiting to say that forever, but he didn't want us to make fun it, of him. He whips that out now that he won. He thinks he can whip that especially, out. Especially especially I can get one that once has a little voice modulator so I can actually sound like a clone. Yeah. Hit Dave sidebar real quick. You and me. Kevin has one of those already. <laughs> I do not <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, okay. that might be true, but let's look at the things you have. Harry Potter. All right, one. it is time to close out the episode, <laughs> and we will catch you next time on Unlikely Throwdown. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Unlikely Throwdowns podcast, brought to you by Brothers Born Media. That was a fun episode. 
Hope you had a good time. We love Star Wars and we love James Bond. And nothing like putting them together, am I right? Hey, if you have an idea for a throwdown, email us at brothersbornpodcast at gmail.com or submit it through our website, www.brothersbornmedia.com. You could also hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash brothersbornmedia. We would love to hear from you if you have a suggestion for a, a character for our show. Also, if you're enjoying the show, please share it with your friends and give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Folks, that would be awesome. See you later. Bye, 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 bye,